Dr. Sage here, back with a discussion on fungi. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the different types of fungi. There are five major phyla of fungi. We're going to go through these one by one, starting with the chytrids. Members of this phylum are considered to be the most primitive fungi, and probably appeared about 500 million years ago. These fungi are found everywhere. They synthesize and release digestive enzymes to break down molecules in the protective cover covers of other organisms, things like chitin or cellulose. Some of these are found in the digestive flora of the ruminants. So those are things like cows, for example, that have things inside their stomachs that helps them to digest the food they're eating. And this category of fungi were for a long time categorized as protists. They're primarily aquatic, they're aerobic, zoosporotic, which means they have a modal flagellated asexually produced spore. They are the only fungi with modal cells. They're microscopic and primarily unicellular. So one individual is only one cell big, but a few of them can form colonies. They lack the branch hyphae that you think of characteristically when you think of fungi. And one of these species of fungi is implicated in the declining frog populations that we're seeing in our ecosystems. The next phyla is the zygomycetes. These are co-entonotic, which means the cells have more than one nuclei inside them. They have both sexual and asexual life stages. The asexual life stage is through the sporangia whereas the sexual life stage has positive and negative mating types that conjugate to form the heterokaryotic zygosporangium. They're typically freeze resistant. Some of these species are used to produce steroids and others form mold on bread. The abuscular mycorrhizae fungi, also known as a glomeromycota, are a relatively small group. There's only 160 species. Arbuscules are branching invaginations that the fungus makes when it invades plant roots. Endomycorrhizae are a mutualistic association. Next phyla is uh, Ascomycete, also known as the sac fungi. There's about 60,000 species of these. Most are sparotrophs, which means they're organisms that feed on non-living organic matter, and they can digest cellulose, lichen, and collagen. Most are composed of septate hyphae. Morals and truffles are famous gourmet delicacies revered throughout the world. Many plant diseases, like powdery mildews, leaf curl fungi, or god of rye, um, are in this group. And some of these fungi cause serious human infections called mycosis. They have both sexual and asexual reproduction. For example, yeast, uh, do asexual reproduction through budding. So a small bulge forms on the side of the cell. It receives a nucleus and gets pinched off and becomes a new full cell, which is a new individual because the yeast is unicellular. Other ascomycota produce spores called conidia or conidiospores. Now, the ascomycetes can be helpful to humans. For example, aspergillus is a group of green molds used to produce soy sauce by fermentation of soybeans. Aspergillus is used to produce citric and gallic acids. And a species of penicillium is a source of the familiar antibiotic called penicillin. Yeast can be both beneficial and harmful for humans. Saccharomyces cerevisiae are added to relatively sterile grape juice to make wine. When some yeast ferment, they produce ethanol, which is alcohol, and carbon dioxide. Uh, S. cerevisiae is also used in genetic engineering experiments, and it's a common model organism within lab studies. Whereas candidia is a yeast that causes fungal infections, and oral thrush is a candidia infection in the mouth, common in newborns and AIDS patients. The next phyla is the Basidiomycota, also known as a club fungus. This has about 22,000 species. This is a familiar toadstools, mushrooms, bracket fungi, and puffballs. Some are deadly poisonous. Also plant diseases such as smuts and rust. Their mycelium is composed of septate hyphae. They usually reproduce sexually. Haploid hyphae fuse forming a dikaryotic mycelium. The dikaryotic mycelium forms fruiting bodies called basidiocarps which are mushrooms. 
Now, fungi can also form symbiotic relationships. One of these are called lichens. This is a symbiotic association between a fungus and a cyanobacterium, or green algae. Okay, remember cyanobacterium is a blue-green bacterium. Okay, so cyanobacterium and green algae, they both can do photosynthesis, which means they're producing sugar molecules. Now the fungus has specialized fungal hyphae that penetrate the photosymbiotic symbiote, and then these hyphae transfer nutrients directly to the fungus. Lichen has many forms, they can be crust-like, hair-like, or leaf-like. Another symbiotic relationship is the mycorrhizae. These are mutualistic relationships between soil fungi and the roots of most familiar plants. This gives the plants a greater absorptive surface. It helps plants to acquire mineral nutrients, and it can be made up of ecto or endomycorrhizae. The earliest fossil plants have mycorrhizae associated with them. We're going to learn more details about this interaction between a fo soil fungus and plants whenever we discuss plants. Now fungi serve multiple roles within our ecosystem. They're an important part of the nutrient cycles. For example, these bracket fungi grow on the sides of the tree and are the fruiting structures of Abyssidiomyces. They receive their nutrients through their hyphae, which invade and decay the tree trunk. Shelf fungi, called that because they grow on trees in a stack, attack and digest the trunk or branches of a tree. While some shelf fungi are found only in dead trees, other can be parasites of living trees and cause eventual death. So they are considered serious tree pathogens. Another way that fungi interact in our ecosystem is some ants actually farm fungi. So this ant here is carrying a leaf and it's gonna use that leaf to feed fungi. Why is it doing that? Because the fungi are then gonna give the ants nutrients. Some fungal pathogens include green mold on grapefruit, powdery mildew, stem rust, and gray rot on grapes. Now in wet conditions, the fungus that causes gray rot can destroy a grape crop. However, controlled infections of grapes uh, result in what's called noble rot, a condition that produces strong and much prized dessert wines. Humans can also be infected by fungi. For example, ringworm presents as a red ring on the skin, or you can have superficial mycoses on the scalp, or there's an ascomyces that infects airways and causes symptoms similar to the flu. Some fungi are parasites of other animals. For example, the ash borer is an insect that attacks ash trees. However, the ash borer is in turn parasitized by a pathogenic fungus, and this holds promise as a biological insecticide. In other words, we can intentionally infect the ash borers to try to prevent them from killing off trees. Another interesting fungus is called cordyceps. It's a fungus in the phyla Ascomycota, and it infects ants. Now, when ants are infected with this fungus, in the late stages of growth of the parasite of the fungus, the ants are directed to crawl high up on a tree branch and then bite down on a limb or a leaf. In other words, the fungus is actually changing the behavior of the ants. The fungus is controlling the ants to crawl high up and then bite down. Then the ant dies and then the fungus grows out of the ants. You can see it here growing out of the ants. And then it can produce spores which it can then spread to infect other ants in the area. So, what is this fungus doing? It's kind of turning the ant into a zombie. It's taking over control of the ant. Interestingly, that concept has been applied in video games. If you've ever heard of the video game The Last of Us, the idea is a fungal infection infecting humans and causing them be to become zombie-like. Okay, that idea came from a real fungus, cordyceps, that infects ants. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to the different categories of fungi. And that concludes our lectures on fungi. So until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.